my name is Caroline Sanchez. I'm a marine biologist at SPC since 2004. I've been studying marine biology at the University of James Cook in Australia and I've been identifying prey for our Pacific marine specimen bank, but also developing trainings for observers to collect samples at sea and in port. I've been collecting samples, more than thousands of samples so far since 2004 for our Pacific Marine Specimen Bank and I'm here today to share with you my knowledge and my experience. Today, we're going to learn how to identify and extract internal organs of tuna. We are going to need a knife, plastic bags, label, gloves. I'm going to show you how to extract the internal organs of the tuna. Before sampling a whole fish, you always measure the fish using a caliper or any other measuring instrument. Here, I'm using a caliper. I place the top of the caliper against the snoot of the fish and slide the caliper towards the fork of the fish. We have a skip jack measuring 76 cm from the upper jaw to the fork length. On board long-line vessels, the crew will gill and gut the tuna. Do not cut the muscles of the fish because the fish has a very high commercial value and sometimes, for very large specimens, they sell it at the auction. On board percent vessels, or when you go fishing with your own boat, you can cut the fish belly. Before you collect your samples, prepare your plastic bag with your labels. If you use an SPC cable tie label, remove the label from the mouth of the fish. Once your hand is covered in blood, it will be hard to open the plastic bag. I will demonstrate first the techniques that you can use on tuna with low commercial value. We are going to look at the internal organs together because you need to be able to identify them to collect them. Use the tip of your knife to cut the belly. Be careful not to slice too deeply into the fish because you will damage the stomach. Here you can see on top, the liver has a darker color most of the time. Underneath, you have the digestive system. If you remove the digestive system, you will see the stomach underneath. The intestines are attached here, and it's easy to identify as it will be attached to the fish's anus. If you look deeper, you will find the gonads against the backbone. Remove the liver. Cut the stomach as close as possible to the gills. Grab the guts and pull everything. If the fish is mature, the gonads should come off with the rest of the gut. Be careful not to break them. If the fish is not mature, you will find the gonads stuck towards the backbone of the fish. Cut the stomach away from the digestive system and remove the rest of the liver and any remaining gills. If you break the gonads, it's okay, just collect them, but try not to break them. Place each sample aside. Place each sample inside the plastic bag and make sure you can read your label. Sometimes the label will fall inside the plastic bag and can get stuck within the sample. Once it freezes, the sample fold around the label and then you have to pull out the label and sometimes defrost the sample to be able to pull the label. You don't want to defrost your sample. Remove as much air as possible as it will take more space if you have a lot of samples. 
Place all the samples coming from the same fish on top of each other and roll them together. I'm going to show you how the fishermen cut the tuna on board a long line vessel. First, they cut the gills And then towards the anus, they cut the intestines. Sometimes they cut the intestines first and then the gills. Sometimes they cut around the anus to detach the intestines from the fish or sometimes they make a slight cut. If the section is big enough, you can use it as a muscle sample with the rest of your samples. Push the intestines inside the fish and then pull the gills out to remove the entire gut. Here you can see the liver, which is darker and has a butterfly shape. Then the digestive system, not yet the stomach. The intestines and then the stomach is just here. And if you're lucky, the gonads are still attached to it. Sometimes the gonads will stay with the guts. Sometimes they remain inside the fish, especially if the fish is very large, because on board the long-lined vessels, you will catch tuna that are larger than 70 cm, and more likely 90 cm. And at that size, for a skipjack, for example, they are already mature with large gonads. And if the tuna is not yet mature, the gonads are too thin and stay stuck against the backbone of the fish. If the gonads are still inside the fish, you just need to slide your hand inside the fish and feel the skin against the backbone. You will find the gonads, pull them very gently, being careful not to break them. To collect the samples now, collect a section of liver. Cut the stomach as close as possible to the gills. Be careful, the prey don't come out of the esophagus. If they do, just push them back inside. And if you can't because they are too small, place them inside the plastic bag with the stomach. And don't lose anything. If the stomach is really full, just use a piece of rope to close the stomach. Remove the digestive system away from the stomach. Same as before, place each sample inside a plastic bag with a label. Make sure you can read the label and remove the air. The samples coming from the same fish can be folded together. Remove the air while you are rolling the bags together. Always place your sample away from the sun. If you have a small cooler with ice, place your sample inside it straight after the extraction. That's it for today! You can check the other videos for the Pacific Marine Specimen Bank Sampling Project. Thank you!